And now to the news in full. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received a phone call on Friday from German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassam Radi said that the two leaders discussed over phone a number of international and regional issues of mutual concern, atop of which is Libya. Merkel said she is keenly interested in getting knowledge of Egypt's vision regarding the latest developments in Libya in light of the country's presidency of the African Union. President el-Sisi meanwhile reiterated Egypt's firm stance on the Libyan crisis being represented in the restoration of national institutions, bringing an end to the chaos resulting from the widespread of criminal groups and armed militias, granting a top priority to battling terrorism and putting an end to attempts of foreign interference in the Libyan internal affairs. The talks also covered means of enhancing future bilateral ties, with the German Chancellor expressing her desire to broaden joint cooperation with Egypt in different fields amid the increasingly promoted level of coordination between the two countries over the past years. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi arrived home concluding a two-day state visit to the United Arab Emirates. The head of state held summit talks with Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and had a tour in Abu Dhabi International Exhibition for Petroleum. Details. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi arrived home concluding a two-day state visit to the United Arab Emirates. Before his departure, President al-Sisi and Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al Nahyan, the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, had a tour in Abu Dhabi International Exhibition for Petroleum, which is considered one of the three biggest exhibitions in the oil and natural gas fields in the world and the biggest in the Middle East and North Africa. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassam Radi said the exhibition is a good opportunity to exchange experiences and best practices. Earlier, the head of state held summit talks with Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan on means of enhancing bilateral ties in addition to a number of regional and international issues of common concern. In a tweet following the talks, President El-Sisi said that he is satisfied with the brotherly ties between the peoples of both countries and expressed pleasure, pleasure for meeting the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince. During the visit, Sheikh Mohammed awarded President El-Sisi the Order of Zayed, the state's highest award granted to heads of state and kings. The two leaders also witnessed the signing of a number of cooperation agreements and MOUs in the fields of manpower, taxes and insurance. The visit comes within the framework of the strong and strategic bilateral relations between the two countries, as well as the two countries' keenness on continuous consultation and coordination to face various challenges facing the region in order to maintain Arab national security. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli on Friday instructed that a General Authority for Tourism Development plan be quickly reviewed and revised by the Higher Council for Planning and Urban De Development in line with Egypt's 2030 vision for sustainable development. The Prime Minister's instructions were made as he presided over a meeting to discuss the development plan with the Ministers of Housing and Tourism who noted that the Authority's strategy aims making the optimal benefit from the nation's economic and social resources Sources, in addition to enlarging the participation of the private sector in development efforts. She added that the authority's role will be limited to planning and supervising development efforts in desert areas and encouraging provincial investments through creating integrated tourism centers to be owned and run by the private sector. As part of his current visit to Washington, Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri attended a ministerial meeting on Syria. During the meeting, Shukri spilled out Egypt's vision on the Syrian crisis and hailed the start of the Constitutional Committee's work while its convention in Geneva. In their communique at the end of the meeting, the foreign ministers of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, the United States, Britain and France asserted their keenness on the Syrian sovereignty, unity and territorial safety. In addition to the rejection of any attempt to forcibly change the current Syrian demographic status. The ministers also urged all Syrian parties to immediately bring into effect a ceasefire agreement earlier struck to halt violence in northeast the country. 
Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri has asserted that the anti-Daesh international coalition needed to continue exerting efforts to achieve its targets and confront any country that used terrorism to achieve political goals. Shukri made the remarks in the ministerial meeting of the small group of the global coalition to defeat Daesh held in Washington in the presence of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and a number of foreign ministers. Shukri stressed that the coalition needed to pay attention to face thoughts propagated by Daesh, voicing Egypt's desire and readiness to contribute to backing such efforts and spreading moderate Islam through the Azhar institution. The minister praised remarkable achievements made by the coalition to defeat Daesh terrorists in Syria and Iraq. The top diplomat also warned against serious consequences of violation of the Syrian territories and the Turkish aggression on Syrian lands. A meeting to discuss Ethiopia's Renaissance Dam takes place on Friday in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa. Ministers of Water Resources and Irrigation from Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan are expected to participate in the gathering with the participation of technical delegations from the three countries. The two-day meeting will also be attended by representatives from the United States and the World Bank. Ministers of Irrigation from Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia are set to convene for meetings in order to reach consensus on the terms to fill and operate the dam by January 2020. And to details, the Monetary Policy Committee at the Central Bank of Egypt decided to cut key interest rates by 1% in its meeting held on Thursday. The new cuts are the fourth in 2019 and the third consecutive cuts. The overnight deposit and lending rates were cut by 100 basis points to 12.25% and 13.25% respectively. According to the CBE statement, the new cuts were driven by the continuous annual inflation rate that registered 4.8% in September, then 301% in October, which is the lowest since December 2015. It added that the initial data shows stable real GDP growth registering 506% during the third quarter of 2019. Egypt's stock market indices retreated during last week's dealings, losing around 9.3 billion Egyptian pounds. Market capital for listed company shares reached 728 billion Egyptian pounds, compared to 737.4 billion Egyptian pounds the previous week. The board's weekly report showed that the stock exchange indices collectively retreat. The main EGX30 index declined by 1.69% to reach 14,545 points. The EGX 70 index for the small and medium shares went down by 0.23% to reach 546 points and the more expanded EGX 100 index was down 0.81% to reach 1,478 points. The overall transactions and dealings within the session reached 16.9 billion pounds. Welcome back, dear viewers, to sports segment in full. Egypt draw one all versus Kenya in the first round of the African Cup of Nations qualifiers at Burg Al Arab Stadium in Alexandria in, in Egypt on Thursday. The Egyptian team got their first point in the qualifiers while, while Comoros became at the top of the Group G after beating Togo 1-0. Egypt secured a precious 2-1 victory over Cameroon at the end of the Group A matches at the Under-23 Africa Cup of Nations Championship qualifier 
for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Mustafa Mohamed scored Egypt's two goals to be the top scorer of the tournament with four goals, giving his team three points, which put Egypt at the top place of the group. By this result, Egypt leads the group with nine points, while Cameroon's balance was frozen at four points and in the second place and leave the championship on goal difference after Ghana beat Mali 2-0, raising their tally to four points in the second spot while Mali became at the bottom of the group.